Where's my money? Oh right, there it is. That's the Huawei P20 Pro. Expensive like shit, 899 euros. That's probably the most amount of cash I ever spent on a Android phone. But is it worth it? Well, that's exactly what I will try to find out while using this thing as a daily driver for the next couple of weeks. First impressions? Well, let's check them out. So design-wise, uh, the Huawei P20 Pro looks pretty interesting and, yep, pretty beautiful. Um, I got the blue model, as you can see. We've got a nice glossy silver metal frame there with a red highlight on the power button, as well as a blue glass bag, which is slightly curved to the edges, so this feels very nice in the hands. What I dislike a little is that the camera module sticks out a lot, which causes some wobbling when the phone is placed on a table. And as you can see, this thing got three cameras. So that's the world's first triple camera. And it's really, really, really good. Um, I love the camera on this phone already after using it for just one day. What's a little disappointing to me is build quality. It should be top notch. Everything should um, fit together perfectly in this price range, but that's not the case here. If you slide your finger across this area here, you feel that it is a little edgy. The glass doesn't align properly with the metal frame, which is really sad because a lot of phones in lower price ranges manage to do that. So regarding the build quality, I'm not entirely satisfied at this price point, which is a real pity. What's very interesting as well is the front because this phone boasts a notch, as you can see, and that's the first Android phone with a notch I use. Um, and surprisingly, it doesn't bother me at all because they added some extra height to the display for this notch, so it doesn't eat away any space of the screen. So the notch actually is in the status bar of the Android operating system. It doesn't get into the content area of the screen. So in fact, you aren't losing any space by that. And if you are annoyed by the notch, you can disable it by setting this area, this notification area to black, so it will be almost invisible then because this is an OLED screen where black really is black. Screen-wise, it looks really good. It's a great AMOLED panel they use there. You almost can't see any pixels. You need to come very close to that. Colors look very realistic yet vivid. They aren't too intense as it is often the case for AMOLED screens. Um, what should be better though is screen brightness. Sometimes I have issues reading this uh, phone under bright sunshine, um, which is a pity at this price range. There are a lot of phones which are much brighter. And also this thing is supposed to support HDR content where brightness is very important. So um, yeah, the lack of brightness is certainly an issue there. What I'm personally not a friend of is the Emotion UI. Huawei uses on their phones. I think it's way too cluttered and just doesn't look that nice. But that's just my personal preference. It's perfectly fine if you love it. 
But what's definitely an issue there is that the software doesn't seem to be quite ready yet, which is again a real letdown at a price tag of 899 euros. I mean, at this price, you should expect that they are able to ship a phone with a ready software, but that's really not the case yet. I have had quite some crashes already and some apps don't work properly. For example, Google Maps, it runs very slow. It is almost unusable. It takes ages to load up, as you can see. And then once it loaded up and you're looking something up, well, as you can see, it doesn't react at all. I've already done numerous reboots, tried resetting the app data. It just doesn't work. I can't use Google Maps there. And what's also an issue is that uh, this phone does support desktop mode. So you can hook up an HDMI dongle here and use this phone as a PC. It will then show a desktop like uh, user experience, like for example, on Remix OS, um, where you can use apps in windowed mode just to work with that, like with a normal PC. Um, but this one also doesn't seem quite ready yet, which is surprising because this was also present on the Huawei P10. So it's not a new feature, but there are really a lot of apps you can't use. Um, some important apps like, for example, Gmail aren't visible on the desktop mode. You just can't start them and use them, which is an issue for me because I use Gmail as my main email client on Android phones. So yeah, it, it does seem a little bit half baked right now but I think this will be fixed in the future. What blew me away, by the way, is the reception quality on this device. Um, I've never had a phone that has such a great reception quality in mobile networks. I can get a 3G connection at places where I normally only have Edge and that's just insane. And I even get good data rates with that. So they did a great job in here. This is by far the best phone in terms of reception quality I've ever had. Regarding performance, this thing gets around 209,000 points in Antutu, which is a lot, but somehow you don't really feel it that much. If you are using this phone on a daily basis, it is fast, but it doesn't feel like a high-end device, more like a premium mid-range phone. Um, this reminds me a little about the issues some MediaTek powered devices have. You get high Antutu scores, or pretty much high scores on any benchmark, but when actually using the phone, it just doesn't feel as smooth as, for example, a Qualcomm device. And that's exactly the case here. And most of the time it runs smooth, but if you have some heavy load on it, lots of apps open, a switch between stuff fast, scrolling huge lists, it can get hiccups from time to time, which for example aren't there when using a Snapdragon 835 powered phone, for example, like the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2 or something like that. So the performance isn't quite on the level you would expect and not on the level you would expect at the price tag of 899 euros so that's kind of disturbing by me but it might be improved with further updates um, with further optimizations so yeah let's see about that i'm not really disappointed by the performance by no means but it is not as good as i expected on the other hand what blew me away again is audio quality this thing both stereo speakers one down here and one here at the top inside the notch which is also used as a phone call receiver and it sounds just great there is a, a lot of dynamic range you get deep bases but also nice troubles and heights um, without them interfering with each other um, no scratching even at highest volume it's really a pleasure to listen to music with the internal speaker or watching a movie. Um, really nice. Um, you don't necessarily need headphones on this one, which is a big surprise to me. Um, by the way, you don't have a headphone jack there. <laughs> That's pretty much normal these days. So you have to use a Type-C adapter or wireless earbuds. Um, the adapter, by the way, is included. So what about the camera? I won't show you any pictures now. I will leave that for the camera review, but let me tell you that this thing is insane. It has the best zoom feature of any phone I tested so far. You can get five times zoom. Three of that is optical and the other um, two times zoom is added by software. But thanks to artificial intelligence, um, they make the picture appear very sharp and it in the end is almost lossless 
digital zoom. So the five times zoom looks great most of the time and it's just insane how well it works. And not only that, um, thanks to the triple camera setup, it catches a lot of light and there is a huge 40 megapixel sensor inside of there um, and the extra information of that is used for example in low light shots. So you can uh, do a long exposure shot with five seconds without using a tripod and up with having a sharp image without any shakiness, which is insane. I mean, try that with another phone that supports long, long exposure. Just do a point and shoot without a tripod. You will have a blurry image um, that just doesn't look good at all. But this one can do that. Long exposure shots without a tripod. It works amazingly well. So yeah, in terms of camera, this is probably the best phone you can get right now. Um, I can tell you that already. So if it doesn't, so if the price tag doesn't distract you and you just need an awesome camera, go get it. You won't regret this. So I think that's already enough for some first impressions. As you see, camera great, but otherwise it has some flaws, which disappoint me a little at this price point. Um, but still, all in all, it's, it's a great phone and I'm looking forward to using this as a daily driver um, during the next week or a little bit more. So stay tuned for more content on the Huawei P20 Pro and of course, the full review on this beauty. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.